Hi, this is Scott Hanselman. I've been doing a series of how to really use Microsoft Office. I would encourage you, if this is the first video you've ever seen, to take a look at the others. There's a playlist. You can click right here. Uh, and we've got videos on all aspects of Word. I'm going to build up a whole list of these. So if you want a particular topic, put it in the comments and I will give you what you want. Uh, this video is going to be about styles in Word because that has been the most requested thing. Now in this case I'm just going to take a resume that I found online. I just went and googled uh, for this here. I'll point out that I'm zooming in by holding down control and scrolling in. Very useful feature. Let's talk about styles. People don't use styles. It sucks. People don't understand styles. They see this here and frankly they ignore it. So I'm going to give you some superpowers by explaining how styles work. Now first you can see that there are some existing styles. These are the styles that come with normal. If you're a CSS person or cascading style sheets person, surprisingly styles in Word are very similar to styles in CSS. If you don't know what CSS is, don't worry about it. But a style, you can think of it as a named collection of formats. So it's all the different things, bold, italics, font size, but also line spacing, paragraph marks, uh, excuse me, paragraph spacing, things like that. So for example, if I click on uh, Jason's name here in this resume and then select heading one, I've just set that entire line to heading one. Now I selected it like this, but I can also just click along the left side. That'll select the entire line. I can also click on styles here in the pop down. So this allows me to avoid going back up here and back down here and back up here. So click to the side, click styles, Click heading one. I'm going to hit control Z to undo it and you'll notice that I'm using Karnak which is showing you the shortcut keys. So watch that lower right hand corner to see uh, some of the things I'm doing. Now I don't like that heading one. I like the one I've got except this is just manually set. So what I want to do is make heading one like this. So when I'm selected, when I'm in this line, I'm going to right click up here and I'm going to say update heading one to match the selection. So now heading one is this, which means I could go over here and click heading one and heading one if I wanted to. I've now made that a named style. I've made that my own. But if I like this, but it's not quite there, I can also right click on the heading and say modify. Now this dialog box is a little bit uh, older. It has some historical baggage to it. Uh, but if you've been using Word since 1992 or 3 or 1997, when a lot of us got into Word 97, you'll notice that this is the trick. This button down here in the corner, Format. This gives you access to changing fonts and paragraphs. So for example, if I click Paragraphs, notice that this dialog jumped out of that dialog, which jumped out of here. So it's all part of the same style. And I'm going to go and say, I want the spacing after heading one to be 12. You notice it's giving me a little preview here. All right. This is how you add spacing. Not by pressing enter. To be clear, spaces and tabs and enters that are just typed manually are not how you add either vertical or horizontal space. For more information on tab stops and spaces, check out my tab stops and spaces video. But you'll notice here, We've made heading one now include six points of space afterwards. So then if I went like this, you can see now I've got white space after each one. For making long documents, I can also use a hotkey. So clicking in here, I could hit control alt one, control alt one to make heading one or control alt two for heading two. Again, I'll control Z out of there. I can take any chunk of text and the formatting contained within and turn that into a style. So I'm going to take this and rather than updating normal to match selection, I'm going to click here. See that little pop out there? That brings out this kind of cool styles palette. And I'm going to click on new style. I'll call it resume normal. and make sure that matches the selection. So now I can go and say resume normal for all of these. 
So why would I do that? Notice that this paragraph, this is selected, resume normal. This is resume normal. And this is. Now I can right click on that and I could say I want all styles based on resume normal to be indented. So I'll go here to format paragraph and I'll indent them by a half an inch and hit OK. Now watch when I hit OK on the final dialog box. They all come in. That's why you use styles. I can change a huge document if I uh, use styles. Now again I'm going to control Z out of there. But I can't really tell this is using resume normal because I have to click here and then click here and click here and I have to watch what's going on and that can be really challenging. Well one thing I can do is I could say for normal select all the normals and then switch them all to resume normal. So you could find all of them. I could say select all the resume normals and change them to heading 2. This is more convenient than search and replace for making big formatting changes. But what I really want to know is I want to know what each line is set as. So here is an advanced trick. And I know you guys like advanced tricks. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. Here we go. File, Options, Advanced. Scroll down a little bit. See what it says here, style, area, pane, width, in draft and outline. Let's give that an inch and a half. We're going to open up a new pane on the left-hand side. Now, nothing happens. That's because this is only available in not print layout, but either outline or draft mode. But look what happens. See on the left here? Now I can see that resume normal is here. This is not header 2, so let's change that. I can see that that's heading 1. These bullets are close, but not quite where I want them to be. So let's make a new style. Let's call them Resume Bullets. Come back down to Format, but when you click on Format, there's nothing about bullets here. Well, it turns out Bullets is under Numbering. Then I'll click on Bullets, and let's give it a funky cool bullet and hit OK, and then OK. This is now Resume Bullets. I can select here. If I click on the left here, remember I'm clicking when the arrow, the cursor arrow is not leaning like this, but rather leaning like that. Click. Now I'm going to hold down Control. I'm holding down the Control button. Click click, click. That's called a disjoint selection. I did not select this. Resume normal. Resume bullets, rather. Now, let's right-click on resume bullets. Change our bullet style. OK. OK. Now we have control of our bullets. Pretty amazing. You might not find this super useful for one-page documents, but if you are a PhD student or a student of any kind who is putting together a document with more than one or two pages, this is what you want to do, I promise. Even more powerful is if you switch back into Print Layout, then turn on the Navigation pane. Notice that my Heading 1, Heading 2 are all now inside of my navigation pane. So let's make another section a heading 2. Watch the left hand side. Click, click. You can imagine this being a very long document. Now I can navigate. Even more, watch this. If I hover over that, you see that little gray triangle that just appeared? Watch this. I can close that up. If I'm working in a long document, I can actually hide that information. Even better, if it's a huge document, I can click around on sections and jump immediately there. I can also, from the navigation pane, uh, do searches and immediately jump to where I want to go. 
extremely convenient thing, the navigation pane tied directly to styles. Now, a lot of times you'll get a style document. Now, a lot of times you'll get a document that's frankly a little bit sloppy and you're going to need to tidy that document up. Well, here's one thing that you can do. You can clean up after everyone else. First, we're going to hit control A to select everything. And then I'm going to hit control space and I'm going to get rid of all the formatting. So now I've gotten rid of everything. If I didn't like that, I could control Z my way back out. But I could, if I wanted, control A and then control shift N and change everything to normal. That's the same thing as clicking on normal. I'll put it back the way it was. Why would I make heading one and heading two just for the navigation pane? No, in fact, it's for references and table of contents. You would think it might be under insert for insert table of contents. Well, you'll find references there. What you really want is the whole references toolbar. And then within here, and I'll do a full video on captions, APA style and citations later. But for now, I'm just going to hit table of contents and make an automatic table. That table will reflect exactly your navigation. Now, here's the best part. Let's change one of these headings. We'll change objective to goal and, and education to learning. Notice that it didn't update here. Well, this table of contents looks like it's been auto-typed, but in fact, if you click on it, it turns gray. That means it's generated. This is actually a field. And I can right-click now in the table of contents and hit Update Field. This is directly reflective of the headings 1 and 2. If I add a new section, I'm going to click on home. I'm going to make that resume normal. I'm going to make that heading two. I'm going to go back up here, right click and say update field. Now it says, hey, I'm going to update the table of contents. You want to do the whole thing? That might take a second or just the page numbers. Well, I want it all. Boom. Now there's social media. Maybe I want that all caps. I'm going to select that. And I'm actually going to click on change case rather than typing it again. I'll hit uppercase. Then I'll come back here, update the field. Now we're all set. Maybe I'll go and uh, add a page break. And now I've got a nice table of contents and you can see where this could go. So styles, super important for controlling a large document. We'll go and do more references in another video, but I hope that you found this useful. Feel free, please, to pass around the playlist for other word learning videos. Uh, right now we've got three videos, but soon if we keep up this pace, we'll have, I don't know, dozens. If this has been useful, please do sound off in the comments and tell me what else you want to see as you learn how to really use Microsoft Office and Microsoft Word.